Right now, the day's biggest news stories from the biggest perspective. This is the Vegas Take with Sharp and Shapiro. Yeah, back at you, hour number three. It is the Vegas Take. It is hump day. It's Wednesday. By the way, if you're wondering, Michael Avenatti will be joining us on Friday. Thanks for joining us. Yes, it is hump day. It is Wednesday. Vegas Golden Knights. We'll be talking nights coming up at the bottom of the hour with Daniel Negreanu. I have some prizes to give away. That's right. We like to take care of our listeners. Man, this is a great prize. What a prize pack this is. Have a listen to this. You're going to win two tickets to the Taste of Downtown at the Rooftop Pool Dick at the Plaza Hotel and Casino, along with a certificate good for a one-night stay in a luxe room at the Plaza and a $100 dining certificate to Oscar Goodman's Steakhouse from the Call Air Cooling and Heating Prize Closet. Okay? Caller number 7 right now at 257-5396. Again, that number... 702-257-5396. We will take caller number seven. Two tickets to the Taste of Downtown at the Rooftop Pool Deck at the Plaza Hotel. A certificate to, for a one-night free stay at the hotel and a $100 dining credit to the Steakhouse Oscars, which is, by the way, awesome. I had the skirt steak there a few weeks ago. It's incredible. Right now, caller number seven. I'll give out that number one more time. 257-5396. Oh, boy. 257-5396. And the phone lines are going crazy. So... Good luck, everybody. Hope you win. I'll have another prize to give away, by the way, later on in the hour, but we'll take caller number seven right now. You want to talk about a story that involves race and possibly reverse racism. We hear all the time, right, if a white police officer shoot, uh, shoots uh, an African-American, it must be racist, right? It must be racism, which is ridiculous. We hear it all the time. If an injustice happens to an African-American, it must be racism. Now, sometimes it is. There's no question. There's racism, sadly, throughout the world. There have been cases of police brutality, misconduct by police because of the color of one's skin. It happens, sadly, but it doesn't happen all the time. And sometimes we have reverse racism in our society. And this story right here, make no mistake about it, is just that. Let me explain. Did you hear this story about a, 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 an African-American young girl, 12 years old, in Virginia, a sixth grader? She claimed that her white fellow classmates cut off her dreadlocks well now the story is changing let me start from the beginning this sixth grader claimed three of her white male classmates held her down cut off her dreadlocks she said that her classmates told her that her hair was nappy and that she was ugly by the way isn't that how don imus lost his job he called african-american basketball players nappy headed hoes and then, he, and then he lost his job. By the way, he deserved it because he's a moron and a racist. But anyway, that's another story. This 12-year-old girl said, they put their hands over my mouth, they put my hands behind my back, and they started cutting my hair and saying it was ugly. She even held a press conference, this 12-year-old, and started crying. So she's got a great acting career in her future. Well, guess what? It turns out the story is a lie. That's right. This young girl lied. She, her name is Amari Allen, and I don't care if she's 12 years old or 30 years old. She lied. She absolutely lied. And who told her to lie? Boy, geez, I wonder. Do you think this is one of those situations where she just made this all up herself and just happened to say that three of her white classmates held her down, cut off her dreadlocks? I find that hard to believe. I don't think this is all her makings. I actually believe that there were other adults involved here. Maybe family members, maybe friends. I don't know. Now, I'm speculating here, but I don't think this 12-year-old did this all on her own. I'm sorry, I don't. And, and, and a New York girl, 11 years old, you know, what was charged with a hate crime after allegedly attacking a black classmate on a bus. And this happened a few days earlier, and that's a legitimate crime. But it takes away from crimes like that when you have people make stuff up. I bring up Jesse Smollett. It's funny. We don't hear about Jesse Smollett anymore, do we? Whatever happened to Jesse? He should be behind bars as far as I'm concerned. But he's not. 
And that story just went away. That was reverse racism. Jesse Smollett is a racist. He has a problem against white people. And he decided to fabricate a story, clearly fabricated. He cost the city of Chicago a lot of money, by the way. A ton of money. What, whether he had a problem with white people, I'm, I'm not sure if that could, be, that could be stated. But he definitely knows that the media will take something like that <clears throat> and sensationalize it. And he was trying to become a prophet for the homosexual community and for, and for yeah. African Americans by creating this false scenario. And to me, I consider that an act of terrorism. Because what if that had actually happened? What, what yeah. if that had happened and I mean, there would have been a giant outrage? Same with, same with this little girl. She's 12 years old, obviously, but she was clearly trying to start an issue. And for what reason? Because she wanted to create a conflict between two races. And I bring up Jesse Small because I think this is the same oh, thing. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's I, very similar. I find it hard to believe that she did this all on her own. Okay? So this is Amari Allen. This is the 12-year-old that claims that three of her white classmates cut off her hair. And now it turns out to be a complete and total fabricated lie. This is Amari Allen in her own words. I held it in. I felt like like a weight was being added to my shoulder every, each day that I held it in. I put my hands over my back, put my the hand over my mouth, and so they started to cut my yeah. hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a little liar. You're a little liar is what you That's are. That's what we call a sixth-grade sociopath starting very early. She has a... Uh, she should hang out with Antonio Brown... And Jesse Smollett. Well, she has a great future career working for Fox News. I think she'd be a great political analyst for Fox News. No, she is a little liar. And I understand she's only 12 years old. I understand she's a little kid. Let me tell you something. When I was 12 years old, I didn't lie and say that three black people, you know, tied me down. And actually, I did have hair back then. I didn't say that they cut off my hair. No, I didn't do that because, number one, I wasn't a racist. And, number two, I didn't make stuff up to hurt people. 12 years old is old enough to know right from wrong. 12 years old is old enough to know that you don't make up stuff like this because it could hurt other people. It's one thing if you call somebody a name if you're 12, you get into a school fight or something like that. But but this is a orchestrated lie. Make no mistake all, about it. This is to, reverse racism. Oh, oh, absolutely. But all you have to do is you have to watch. I don't care if you're, if you're 8 years old or 12 or 14. You have to watch TV and you see how far the media will take these things. If you want to grab some attention to yourself, this is how you do it. And this is what she did. Yeah, well, now it backfired and she should be expelled. And I'm happy that it did backfire. Make I'm no, happy that, that, this was, that this was unearthed. Make no mistake about it. Because this girl should thing. be expelled. Go to another school. She should be expelled. Uh, we have our producer, yeah. uh, Jason Stein, here in the studio. Jason, what you got for Thank us? Thank you for the introduction. Yeah. Sure. Did, did you mention the part about Karen Pence? Did I I d- no. So that's Bring another layer up. to this story is that this girl is going to school where Karen Pence, second lady of the United States, uh, Vice President Mike Pence's wife, teaches, part, on, I think on a part-time basis, teaches at that school. And so this is even, a, there's another layer to this, and that being that you have some people on the right saying that this was some kind of smear Mm-hmm. To make to make uh, to make Republicans look bad, and uh, and so th- this girl did a lot of damage, and beyond you know just the, just just the person that she well, accused of, of cutting her hair. Well, here's an idea. Here's what make Mike, makes Mike Pence look bad. Here's what makes Republicans look bad. Hey, guess what? His wife works at a school that does not allow homosexuals to go to school there or work there. How much worse can you look? You didn't need something else. They got enough right there. That's, this is the school that does not allow homosexuals, but apparently they allow 12-year-old African-American girls lie and fabricate stories and say that three white students held her down and cut off her dreads. Apparently they allow that, but they don't allow homosexuals in this school. Maybe you should start allowing homosexuals go to this school because maybe crap like this won't happen. How about that, Mike Pence? You evil human being. You hater. You homosexual hater, Mike Pence. Same thing with his wife. They're evil people as far as I'm concerned. The evil Pences. This crying wolf is not. Sorry, I went on a tangent. Is not there. good. For, you know, there's true. There's true racism, right? There are truly racist acts. There are racist people, and then you've got your Jesse Smollett's of the world and this girl, crying wolf, and it's tough because then when someone truly alleges a racist or a hate crime. You might, you might not want to believe them mm-hmm. because of this. I, so th- this is a lot of damage done, in my opinion. I want to open up the phone lines to this because I want to know what you think should happen to this 12-year-old girl, this 12-year-old African-American girl that completely fabricated a story. Now, what would have happened to those three students if this was true? They would have been expelled. It would have been a hate crime, possibly, even though you were 12 or 13. 
What do you think? So I, I posed this question. And they would have been labeled racist for their entire life. Yeah. So I pose this question, and I'll ask you, J.D., but I want to I open up the phone lines. I pose this question to you and the listeners. What do you think should happen to this 12-year-old African-American girl who completely fabricated a story that three white students held her down, assaulted her, and cut off her dreadlocks? Should she be expelled? Should she get a suspension? Or should nothing happen? Should there be no accountability? We'll take your phone calls. What do you think about this? 257-5396. Again, that number to call 702 702- Two five seven five three nine six. JD, I think she should be expelled. What do you say? Yeah, I, I like I like expulsion. I like entering her into an alternative school, but I also want to get a, a deep, deep conversation with her about where this idea came from. Mm-hmm. What are her parents like? Wh- who who is influencing her in, in her life? I would like I would like to learn these things because you're right. It's not normal for a twelve year old to do something like this. It seems very very orchestrated. Obviously, it was orchestrated. But who did did she put did she put herself onto this or, or was she? Was she pushed to do this? That's what I'd like to know. I personally believe that she was pushed to do this from maybe a parent, a guardian, uh, a family friend. Somebody had to get in this girl's ears because I can't recall an 11 or 12. Listen, kids lie. But this type of lie, I can't imagine an 11 or 12-year-old. And she happens to pick three white students. It's very bizarre. And and if she says, uh, I just wanted the attention, I put her in a psychiatric ward. I'm not even kidding you. Well, I, I get her mental help quickly. The problem is, is she going to out her her parents? Is she going to out that's, a family again, that's, member? That, that's the answer. I don't know. You know, I, I've been very consistent uh, when it comes to racism and hate crimes. You know, put them in jail, lock away the key, but uh, or throw away the key, I should say. But you know, when it comes to reverse racism, I feel the same way. No tolerance. It's no different than if a woman claims rape and she fabricates a story. Same thing. Rape is, or or sexual assault, whatever the case may be, is extremely serious. It's an extremely serious issue. To me, just as serious is fabricating a story, saying that you were raped to try to hurt somebody when you weren't. Just as serious. And these people that make up these stories, right, not only are they hurting the cause of, of, of real women out there or men that are assaulted, but... You know, they're making almost almost making light of the issue. I believe that if you make up a story like that, the crime should be just as serious. If you make up a story that you were sexually assaulted and it is a complete lie, I think the crime should be as punishable just as much as if it, the actual rape itself. That's what I feel because it's very serious. We remember what happened in the Duke lacrosse case. We remember that, right? Those students uh, on the lacrosse team, their lives have never been the same. Now, they were paid a lot of money. What a horrible circumstance that was where you had one woman who claimed that she was raped by these uh, white lacrosse players. She happened to be African-American, and it was a blatant lie. It was a fabricated story. Again, those kids were paid. They probably didn't need the money because their families are extremely wealthy, but I, I think they deserved it. And now you have the case of these three white students who obviously went through hell these several days after the announcement was made and the lie and the fabricated lie was made by this 12-year-old girl, this African-American 12-year-old girl, it is a complete lie. So when I hear Al Sharpton and I hear Jesse Jackson, they're the first ones to come out when a white officer kills an African-American. They automatically assume it had to be because of race. But when a story like this comes out or the Jesse Smollett story comes out, do we hear from people like Al Sharpton or Jesse Jackson? Do they come out? Do they ever talk about reverse racism? The answer is no, because they are racist in my eyes. We saw the same thing happen, reverse racism, in Ferguson. That story was unbelievable. We heard the hands up, don't shoot narrative, right? And then Michael Brown was painted out to be a hero. Some people that are running for president in the Democratic Party still think Michael Brown is a hero. Julian Castro talks about Michael Brown like he's some sort of hero. No, he's not. Michael Brown is a th- was a thug. And as far as I'm concerned, if you attack a police officer, if you go after a police officer's gun, if you are dumb enough to attack and assault a police officer, in in my eyes, you deserve to be six feet underneath the ground. I don't feel sorry for you one bit. I feel sorry for his family. I feel sorry for his friends. I feel sorry for the city of Ferguson. I feel really sorry for that police officer because he did absolutely nothing wrong, and the evidence backs up my opinion. But yet Julian Castro, who's running for president, seems to think that we should 
think to ourselves, oh, never again to Michael Brown, never again. What do you mean never again? What should a police officer do when he's assaulted by somebody? What should a police officer do when somebody darts at him? Should the police officer just stand there? Should it be his life that should be taken? Absolutely not. If somebody darts at a police officer, if somebody assaults a police officer, I want that officer to take out his gun and get rid of that person. Because that person should not be out there in society right now. Now, he is defending himself. I don't know if 12 years is old enough for jail time. But I will take your calls. We'll see what you think about that. 257-5396 is the number to call. Again, 702-257-5396. What do you think should happen to this 12-year-old that claimed three white people held her down, classmates, cut off her hair, cut off her dreadlocks? What should happen to her? 257-5396. Let's go to Don. Don, what do you think about this? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. Sure. You know, the thing is, is we, we get in uh, our culture right now is so reactive. If something somebody does something wrong, we're, we're quick to, to jump all over them. And the thing is, we're so polarized that people are just picking sides. This young lady needs to be taught. You know, she needs to she has some education on this, some counseling. Um, should she be expelled? No, I don't want to say that. But, I mean, work, work with her. Mm-hmm. Instead of just casting her out, um, she made a mistake. Let me ask you a question, Don, um, and I agree with you. What if she's interviewed, and maybe she has by now, and she says that one of her parents put her up to this? What do you think should happen to one of her parents? Same thing. P- parents need to, they need to be interviewed. They need to go through the process. The thing is, is I mean, are, we're so seriously, we are so polarized politically mm-hmm. that we're taking politics and we're bringing it into the street. Uh, the media doesn't help that. Um, I mean, these kids are trying to learn. Twelve years old. She's got a lot of life in front of her. Sure. Um, and both both sides, the kids who were um, alleged, you know, teach them. Hey, look, yeah. you know. Let's work together. Let's try to work together. It doesn't have to be like, yeah. you know, big peace out thing. But I agree, Don. It has to be a life lesson, and I couldn't agree with yeah. you more. And I think that you're right. I think that she needs to be taught a lesson. She has a lot of life ahead of her. We need to make – I hate to use the term rehabilitation or anything like that. But if for one of her parents put, put her up to it, I think it could be an, uh, an offense that could, could land some jail time. I don't think a 12-year-old deserves jail time. But I certainly do believe she needs to be expelled, and she needs to start over at another school and make sure this never happens again. 257-5396. Let's go to – Tyler, Tyler, what's up? Hey, guys. Uh, I just wanted to make a statement. Tell me what reverse racism is. There's really no such thing as reverse racism. Well, here's what I think. Here's what That's I mean. Impossible. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think it's just racism in general. Yeah. It, just, it just happens to be no white, white to black, okay. black to white. Racism can take place between any two races. Okay, well, here's why I said that, and I, I'll try to give you my answer on that. Uh, when we hear the term racism, You're right. That could easily be an African-American doing something to a Caucasian, right? It could. But the reason why I use the term reverse racism is because when we hear the word racism on TV, it seems to sell. And it usually 99 percent of the time when it's a case involving racism, usually not all the time, but most of the time it involves uh, a minority that has been treated in a bad way. Uh, You know, maybe it was somebody white that, you know, maybe it was a white cop that did something to an African-American. So the reason why I use that term reverse racism is because usually when I talk about racism, people don't think it could happen. Uh, uh, People don't think an African-American could be a a, a racist towards somebody who's white. That's the only reason why I use that term. Okay. No, I totally agree with you. I I mean, I I just wanted to point that out to you. Uh, You know, kind of like irregardless is not a word either. (laughs) So, um, Anyway, I, I get your point. I just, uh, yeah, there's a lot of racism. Uh, I know a lot of, uh, I, I used to live in an area where, uh, you know, just point, an example, Koreans are, you know, typically uh, not fond of African Americans. So that's just as much racism. That's not reverse racism. No, that's just racism. Like, no, I agree with you, okay. Tyler. We agree. That's racism. Okay. But, you know, I. I Okay, I appreciate the call, Tyler. Yeah, the only reason why I use that term reverse racism, and like, like I explained, is because when you hear racism, You've, people assume, oh, right. an African-American you must... Always, you right. always think Caucasian-American to African-American, or the African-American is the one that is the victim of it. Right. And that is not the case. That's not the case here with this story. No, in the United States, that's not the case. I mean, it right. happens between all races, and it has for a long time, and, it, and it's, it's good that that's finally being addressed. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's plenty of people out there. In fact... <laughs> Now, somebody that at one time I considered a friend who's a photographer in this town, um, he's a racist. And I'm not going to say his name, but I don't talk to him anymore. He's an African-American man. We used to be friends. 
and we used to get into it on Facebook and all that, and I would talk about Ferguson, right? And I would talk about the Michael Brown case uh, because, you know, there's a lot of people that don't want to talk about that, the people that were screaming to high heaven, hands up, don't shoot, and they wanted this off officer, you know, get in the electric chair, right? And I, I tried to explain to this guy, listen, the evidence is overwhelming that Michael Brown attacked this police officer. He never put his hands up. And then he called me a racist for only talking about the evidence. And he called this guy a cracker. And he said that guy deserves to be shot and killed. And I said, you're, you're, you're a racist. You obviously have a problem with white people. It's a case-by-case basis when we go by these shootings. Michael Brown, based on his behavior, deserves to be six feet underneath the ground. It's a tragedy for his family and friends. I don't feel bad for Michael Brown one bit. And for these Democratic presidential candidates to, to, to speak of Michael Brown as a hero, he's no hero. He was a criminal, and he deserved to get shot and killed as far as I'm concerned. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to lighten things up a little bit. I don't think anybody's going to be shot and killed at the Vegas Golden Knights game today, but I think certainly there's going to be some brawls. It's going to be a brawl out. Season one opener tonight with the Vegas Golden Knights. Daniel Negrande is going to break it down for us. Coming up next, you're listening to The Vegas Take.